Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking all about HDR photography and how to use it. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody, my name is Eric Marks with FindingMiddleEarth.com and today we're going to be talking all about this hot topic of HDR photography. Uh, you either love it or you hate it, it seems. There's not really a gray area. There's a big mass of people out there that think it is the devil, and then there's people like me that love it for most situations. Uh, but it, it has to make you think differently as a photographer. So we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, before we do, I do want to remind everybody that uh, I've spent about the past three months working on this uh, great photography tutorial for beginners or uh, you know, kind of advanced amateurs. Um, and it's basically a three-part video series, uh, a few hours of footage explaining how to master your camera settings, how to organize your photos, and how to back up your photos. And the whole video is me taking you step by step, very slowly and very detailed, through my personal workflow. So you get to see how I keep all my folders named and dated and organized. You get to see my workflow of how I take them from the camera card to the computer to Adobe Lightroom. Um, and tons of other great helpful tips if you're trying to start to get into photography and kind of take your photography just to that next level. Uh, so if you head on over to my website at findingmiddleearth.com slash store, uh, you will see it there. It's called the Photographer's Apprentice Bundle. I'll also put a link in the description. And if you are a, uh, one of my faithful YouTube subscribers, I have a special coupon code for you that will save you 20% off of the price uh, just as a thank you for watching my videos every week. So if you are interested in that, just uh, comment below and ask for the coupon code or shoot me a message, fill out a contact form on my website, whatever it is, uh, just reach out to me and I will give you the coupon code. Okay, so HDR photography. So it is, uh, for those of you who don't know what HDR is, just very quickly explained, it is the act of taking a few images, more than one image, at multiple different exposures, so basically multiple light levels, uh, some dark, some bright, some medium, and then just blending them together to make a perfectly exposed scene to where nothing in the scene is too dark and nothing in the scene is too bright, okay? Because there are certain times and certain locations where there's harsh sunlight and there's deep shadows being cast by the sun, you know, overhead, and there's just no way your camera in one photo can capture uh, everything perfectly exposed. There's going to be something too bright or something too dark in the photo. Um, and so in those situations, HDR is perfect because it comes to the rescue and it exposes for the harsh, bright highlights, and then it exposes for the deep shadows, and it kind of blends them together. Uh, but I do want to put something to rest here. A lot of people hate HDR because they think that HDR is a beginner photographer taking some photos, throwing them into an, a software, pressing a button, and it just kind of spits out this like work of art. Well, that's not HDR. That's actually just post-processing. It's over-processing. Uh, however, you know, there, that is kind of um, the, you know, I guess the standard of what HDR is known for is this kind of over-saturated, insane, you know, look. But you know what I say to those people that want to do that? So what, you know, let them do it. If they like purple clouds and, you know, blue grass, you know, give it to them. I mean, you know, whatever, if they can, they can, you know, do whatever they want. It's being an artist is all about freedom, right? Creative freedom and kind of outwardly expressing what you feel inside. So, you know, let them do it. It doesn't matter. In this fun world of creative arts, people have their own style. And if their style is to look, you know, insanely unreal, let them do it. It's, it's fine. Uh, but just, I just wanted to lay that to rest because, uh, that's not what HDR is. HDR is nothing more than the act of blending multiple exposures to make one perfectly exposed scene. So the reason I'm making this video is because I was talking to a photographer, okay, uh, a couple of them actually, at this meetup. And they thought that because they learned this HDR technique, that you should just use it all the time and it will just always make every photo look better. Because HDR is known to bring out detail, it's known to bring out 
you know, better colors. It's known to just kind of crispen everything up and make it, uh, you know, just kind of nudge it sideways from reality just a little bit and kind of make it kind of fairy tale-ish. Um, and that's okay. You know, that's okay for, for people to think that they can do HDR all the time. But you have to think about something. I shoot HDR in 99% of my work. But because of that, I have to think about every single shot I take differently. Because I have to compose my shot for an HDR. What do I mean by that? I mean, if I'm going to make the entire scene perfectly exposed and I'm going to bring out detail out of the deepest shadows and you can basically see everything in my image well now I have to think is everything in this scene in this composition going to be interesting and going to positively affect my image you gotta think about that you know let that sink in is everything that my viewers are going to see in this image going to positively affect the image. Um, and so that is, I think, one of the most common mistakes that people make when shooting HDR is that they really don't think about what's in the mid-ground or the, the direct foreground. They just think, oh, there's something really pretty off in the background, so I'll just take an HDR and I'll make everything perfectly exposed and give detail and bring light to everything. But the problem with that is that it distracts the viewers from the very thing that you wanted them to see. The sunset, a cool tree, a river, whatever it might be. And so my theory is that HDR can actually make you a better photographer because you have to think a little more about your composition, in my opinion. And you have to think, is everything that I'm showing going to have a good positive effect, like I said, on the image? So I shot an HDR recently and I got a print made of it. And so I wanted to show you. So this is a sunset that I uh, took a photo of in a wheat field, okay? And while I was there, um, I had to think, right? I really had to think what from the foreground to the midground to the background is everything going to, to kind of make sense and kind of flow so that when, you know, eyes hit this image, is it going to send them everywhere in a million different directions and distract them? Or is it going to kind of make sense? Is the foreground road going to lead them to the sunset, which is going to say, oh, right, sunset, which is going to lead them to the golden color on the wheat from the sunset, which is going to say, oh, well, there's a nice contrast between gold and blue. Wow, look at those, look at those clouds in the sky. So you have to think like that as a photographer. Is everything going to make sense? Am I going to say, great, this, I'm going to use this road as a leading line into the sunset, which is kind of the star of this image. And then there's killer clouds. And so you have to just make this perfect composition to make HDR work. Because as you can see in this photo, let me get it a little closer if I can, there is literally detail everywhere. Even back here on the tree line in the midground, every single you know tree, every single bush, I can see everything in here. And um, even over here behind the sun, and I'll, I'll put the... Uh, the real image up on the screen, I'll overlay it. But if you really zoom in, you can see that there's a train track back here. You know, it, I mean, literally I had to think about is everything positively affecting this image to where if someone wants to buy a very large print of this, um, is it going to work? You know, what, what is someone gonna see in my work if they want a 40 by 60 print for their home? Because oddly enough, uh, since I shot this image, I've sold five prints and I only shot this image a few weeks ago. And so, and they've been of various sizes. So, you know, I, I have to think like that because I do a lot of print sales. Prints are kind of my thing. I love selling fine art. Printing is wonderful. That's a whole nother video, but uh, print your work. I, I encourage it. Printing is, there's nothing like it. It's nothing like actually being able to hold your work instead of looking at it on the screen. Uh, but that's a, a video for another day. Anyway, so I've sold a few prints of this. And because of that, you know, I'm so happy that while I was there that evening, I thought, you know, I, I, I recomposed this shot probably four or five times because I had to think, is everything making sense? So don't let HDR be kind of a crutch for you. Don't think that, um, well, this shot doesn't look great, you know, with one, you know, in my camera after taking one photo. It doesn't look so great. So I'll just bracket my photos, put it into an HDR, and it'll look wonderful. If the composition doesn't look good through an iPhone, 
or through your camera or through anything, it's not going to look good as an HDR. So just don't use HDR as kind of a cop out to make something of your image. Oftentimes, I will actually put my iPhone on my tripod and I'll leave my camera, my lenses and everything in my camera bag, okay? And I'll take my tripod and I'll just kind of set my iPhone on top of it and I'll find a cool composition. And once it looks good on the iPhone, I know, well, if this thing looks good on the iPhone, it's gonna look amazing, you know, once I get my camera out and start, you know, wielding my settings and my aperture and start playing with shutter speeds because I know that I found the right composition. You know, it doesn't matter what, what device it's on. Even if I took it on the iPhone, it would have been a great photo. So you have to think like that. You can't just say, um, you know, oh, well, yeah, may, I could probably make this work if I just shot it in HDR. So that's why I wanted to make this video because there's a lot of people that have confusion about that. You know, don't look at HDR as kind of a, a safety net to get yourself out of a, what could be a bad looking shot. HDR is meant to complement your photos. Um, and always use it that way. Always use it as a complimentary boost in detail or color or whatever it is. I kind of, my whole philosophy in photography is to kind of just nudge the world sideways a little bit. If this is reality, I kind of want to take the Walt Disney view of the world and kind of nudge it sideways just ever so slightly and give people, you know, kind of a, I like to use one word when I think about my photography. I like to use the word hope because I like to, uh, I, I love uh, traveling but I don't get to travel as often as I would like to. There's a t million countries that I would love to go to, and I will one day. I just, right now, I don't have time in my life to do all these, all these things and go uh, to all these countries, but all these places I want to go to, I kind of find um, here in, in Atlanta where I live, I go up to the mountains all the time, and I kind of find locations that are kind of magical and off the beaten path. And so when I find them, I really cherish that. And I... I use HDR to try to capture kind of the essence of how I'm feeling while I'm there and kind of bring that to my viewers. Because if I can't travel a million miles away to this amazing place, I'll go and seek out an amazing place where I live and then I'll just kind of nudge it sideways a little bit with HDR and, and make the color you know, more fairy tale-ish and I'll, I'll make the detail a little better and I'll, I'll want to make people feel like they were standing there right beside me when I was taking the shot. And I want you to have that same effect on people as well when you show them their fo your photos. Because when people look at your photos, you know, it feels good when people say, wow, that's a, that's a great shot. It feels even better the first time you sell a print. That's like a magical thing. It's like, I can imagine that would be like being a musician and hearing your own song on the radio, right? You know, you, you just think someone wants to buy my photograph and hang it in their home. It's amazing. So I'm doing this to help you because I want you to get there. I want you to improve your photography and, and always be getting better and better. And I think that's one of the, the biggest pieces of advice that I've picked up using HDR because I'll be the first one to admit, when I started using HDR, I used it for everything. And no matter what composition, uh, there was this one shot, actually I remember, uh, it was an amazing sunset and I had this like dead forest in the foreground. And it was just trees, you know, followed, they, were, they, were, they had fallen over they were kind of stacked on top of each other and the trees that were fallen, that had fallen down um, were all dead and it was all so distracting and it was just literally taking my eye away from the sunset. But I was like, well, hey, I'll do an HDR. Sounds like a great idea. And so, you know, now years later, I'm like, why would I, why in the world did I do that? Because I, all I did was perfectly expose those dead trees and the sunset. And so it just, there's these big lump of trees sitting in the foreground, taking your eye off of the sunset. Whereas I could have just kind of put those trees in silhouette and then had a great sunset. So you just always think like that. It kind of re makes you rethink composition. Um, so the biggest thing here to take away is rethink your composition. Just use the biggest tool that you have when you're in the field, which is this right here. Use your brain. Your brain is you, always has to be going. Your camera is not your best tool. It's your brain. It, it all starts here and then it comes out through a camera lens. So keep that in mind. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, as always, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.